Welcome to this video presentation about the medial collateral ligament of the knee. My name is Mark Schmitz, I'm a lecturer of anatomy, physiotherapy and musculoskeletal ultrasound and founder of the Anatomy and Physiotherapy Facebook page. In this three-part video presentation I'm discussing a few topics. In the previous episodes I discussed the anatomy and biomechanics of the various layers of the MCL. In this last episode, I'm going to discuss the examination of the MCL and some evidence-based physiotherapy. Okay, we know a great deal more about the anatomy and biomechanics of the MCL. But how to examine it? There are numerous tests described in the literature. For now, only the most reliable tests will be discussed. Again, we only focus on the MCL. In real practice, more tests to examine the interconnected tissues should be added. Functioning is a broad construct, going far beyond physical function and mobility. Following the ICF framework, functioning is understood as the umbrella concept covering body functions and structures, activities and participation. Of course, we physiotherapists work with the ICF framework. We're going to examine all ICF components to get a broad view of the problem. These tests, advised by the knee ligament guideline from 2010, made by the orthopedic section of the American Physical Therapy Association, focus more on the first component of the ICF, the body functions and structures. Assessing pain and laxity can be done with the valgus stress test at 30 degrees of flexion. I explained a few minutes ago that this flexion position is necessary to test the MCL and to rule out the posterior medial capsule. A valgus stress is applied to the lateral side of the knee resulting in opening of the medial joint space. The value of different tests should be interpreted correctly. Very practical and clear books are available which help you to apply best practice to get the most clinically significant info information from each physical examination. There are probably more books, but here you can see two examples. When focusing on the value of the valgus stress test, we can see that the sensitivity, the test's ability to detect those patients who actually have the disorder, is better for the outcome of laxity than for pain. See the smileys at the bottom right of this slide. The specificity, the test's ability to detect those patients who actually do not have the disorder of the valgus stress test is not very good. The outcome pain scores a bit better than the outcome laxity. Both the positive and negative likelihood ratios are poor. So we can conclude that we can't rely on the valgus stress test alone. Additional tests should be done. Musculoskeletal ultrasound, in short MSU, can be used for assessing shape, quality and function of body structures like the MCL. In case of a MCL rupture, you can really see a widening medial joint space when applying a valgus stress to the knee. In various countries, and increasing numbers of physiotherapists, are using MSU for assessing soft tissues like muscles, tendons, capsules, nerves, bursae and ligaments. The validity and reliability of MSU is high, comparable to MRI. MSU is patient-friendly, easy accessible, has low cost, and the system can be used everywhere even directly on the sports field. Another important advantage is the possibility of real-time scanning with a dynamic, functional evaluation of a structure. MSU can be used for diagnosing and support in clinical reasoning, for evaluating connective tissue repair, motivating and informing patients, and for BIA feedback purposes like retraining muscle groups. Visit these links for more information about MSU and tailor-made MSU courses for physiotherapists for your country 
organization or educational institute. A vast number of knee injury outcome scales have been developed and used over the years to evaluate a patient's disability. Active testings and additional function tests can be done to examine the ICF components, activities and participations. According to the knee ligament guideline, a sprain of the MCL and the associated ICF diagnosis of knee stability and movement coordination impairments is made with a reasonable level of certainty when the patient presents with the following clinical findings. The described bullet points are evidence obtained from high quality diagnostic studies, prospective studies and randomized controlled trials. Health professionals need to possess more than just their clinical expertise if they are to meet the demands of the changing healthcare system and the expectations of an increasingly aware and informed patient population. Information fluency and the ability to efficiently access and apply current best evidence in clinical practice can no longer be regarded as optional but should be considered as an essential component of the health professionalism. Hence, there is no reason to suppose that evidence-based paradigm should not be integrated into the practice. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed the three episodes about the video presentation of the anatomy, biomechanics and the examination of the MCL. Use the information in your daily practice and make those patients happy. The list with the 46 used references can be downloaded for free at kinicare.nl. The default language of the page is Dutch. Click the little flags for English or German. Click Education. And after entering the page, again, Education. Choose in the scroll bar Social Media and download the reference list. One long extended version of the three episode MCL video presentation can be viewed at the Anatomy and Physiotherapy Facebook page. This video presentation has been made by Kinicare, specialist in anatomy and musculoskeletal ultrasound with a special interest in the shoulder girdle. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.